but what I really wanted to uh, show is kind of a bit of an orbital mechanic. So let me show that. Um, uh, let me show it in two ways. I'm gonna first show you um, things that orbit Jupiter, which are interesting. And then um, we will show other things that orbit not Jupiter, but Sun, but whose orbit relates to Jupiter. So this is Jupiter that you know. And let me just turn on the orbits again. So right now it's showing me um, orbits of the moons of Jupiter. And let me just track Jupiter. And I'm just trying to get to the um, North Pole of Jupiter, I hope. Am I on the North Pole? You know what? I think I'm on the South Pole because if they're orbiting clockwise, okay. So let me go the other way. I don't want to show you a view that's going to be contrary to what you will more often see. <laughs> this is the view down from uh, view down from the the North Pole of Jupiter. And when you are looking down on the any of the solar system bodies from North, most of the things should be going counterclockwise. So that's a view of Jupiter with its four Galilean moons, starting with the Io. Now, um, um, and I think this is probably a good thing to illustrate. So um, let me show you what these orbits will look like. I can speed up the time and show you how quickly these things orbit Jupiter over a course of months and um, years, maybe a month or so. So uh, this is a 3,000 times time scale. So every second here is about close to an hour um, in real time. And oh, and you see these uh, dwarf moons on the inner orbit. Let me um, turn on the orbit markers for the dwarf moons so that you can see that. So they are the inner dwarf moons. And you see these larger orbits. Let me actually zoom out a little bit more. Um, let's see here so that you can see more of the dwarf moons. <laughs> um, and you see that these dwarf moons on the larger orbits, they orbit Jupiter more slowly than these inner moons. That's Kepler's third law. So let me speed up the time a little bit more so that you can see motion of those. So this is at about a million times time scale. Um, you can see how quickly the real time is passing. I think uh, every second is several days. So that's a, uh, the constellation of dwarf moons orbiting Jupiter. It's <laughs> so that's one way in which it, uh, Jupiter affects motion of many solar system bodies gravitationally, um, its own moons of which it's got many. And uh, because uh, Jupiter is uh, such a large planet, it's uh, influence on the Solar system bodies don't stop there. Uh, let me, let's see, what's the best way to show here? Uh, I'm gonna do it this way. Uh, let me keep, turn off tracking and let me go find the sun. Where is the sun? Um, okay, so I'm gonna go to sun. I'm gonna try to center the sun. Um, and let me just, uh, um, uh, I hope I picked the right direction. Um, I'll, I'll do the correction as needed. Okay, tracking the sun. Let me zoom out. Okay, zoom out. All right. Uh, okay, things are going counterclockwise, which means I'm in the correct orient. I mean, it's the more common convention, looking down on the solar system from the North Pole. Uh, or North Pole of Earth, <laughs> North being defined by Earth. Okay, so this is the view that would show up to Jupiter. And there are other solar system bodies, but I think this is the view that would show the things that I'm interested in. The thing that I want to show you, which I think many of you wouldn't have gotten to yet, it's in the sub module 3.4, that it concerns the asteroids. Let me turn on the markers for the asteroids. Um, markers. You're not markers for all of them, but the asteroid one is that I care about because without these markers, the asteroids would uh, frankly be invisible. And um, I can't quite turn on the orbits for asteroids because I tried it, 
and that makes things look super busy. Uh, uh, this, so you can see these uh, dense uh, lines. That's where the asteroid belt is. But okay, with that, I, we are not going to be able to see anything else. So we'll won't turn on the orbit for asteroids, but we'll leave the markers on for the asteroids so that even though at this scale they are practically invisible, you can still visualize them, see them. And I'm going to speed up the or uh, our time so that you can see the orbit of the Jupiter on reasonable time scale. So I think that's at about a million times. So. Um, so you see the moon, uh, Jupiter moving, its moons following it along. And uh, let me actually make it go faster. And I want you to pay attention to the motions of the asteroids. They are quite chaotic. Um, they are ones that are in the inner solar system orbit. Some of, many of them have very elliptical orbits. And you see a large body of them in the asteroid belt. That's where they are uh, left relatively peacefully, where they don't have a planet to disturb their orbit too much. So they are able to stay at mostly the same orbit. Um, in the inner orbit, but all the uh, planets, Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars have cleared the neighborhood. They have gotten rid of asteroids sharing the same orbit. Or, um, They've done the other thing that you can actually see in this illustration here. When you look at Jupiter, you see whole groupings of asteroids that are in the roughly same orbit as Jupiter. You see these groups here and these groups here. Let me uh, speed up the time so that you can see their follow their motion uh, more clearly. So, um, so these are what are called uh, Trojan asteroids. I think the ones, um, where's my cursor? Uh, ones in front of Jupiter are called Greeks and ones behind are called Trojans. And um, if you read ahead to the thing about clearing the neighborhood, you might wonder, hey, these asteroids are being in the orbit of Jupiter. Doesn't that mean Jupiter hasn't cleared its neighborhood and it's not, it, it should be a dwarf planet. <laughs> No. Um, so Jupiter dominates the orbit of these asteroids gravitationally. They are in the stable equilibrium between the Jupiter and the Sun. These are what's called the Lagrange points. Uh, I forget which one is L4 and which one is L5. But um, so these asteroids, even though they are kind of sharing the orbit of Jupiter, but they are not sharing on the at the equal footing. They are uh, they collect in this area because of the gravitational influence of Jupiter. Um, so, um, so yeah, this is, uh, these are the Trojan asteroids in the orbit of Jupiter. They are only in these special points. They are not way over here. Like these are not Lagrange points. There can be stable orbit of asteroids around here over geological time scale something would happen to their orbit. They would either collide into Jupiter or something would happen. Uh, one last object, sorry, I'm way over time. I think it's called a Hilda. Um, yeah, the Hildas are uh, last group of asteroids that we covered that um, kind of relate to Jupiter. <laughs> and they have this kind of um, orbit between-ish uh, asteroid belt and Jupiter. And um, they are in what's called orbital resonance with Jupiter. Uh, if you track this carefully, I think they are in three to two resonance. Um, I forget the exact number. Um, so this is also one of the uh, potential stable arrangement that, um, uh, that a small solar system body could have it with its uh, uh, associated planet. So Jupiter has cleared the neighborhood of its orbit in the sense that any other bodies in reasonably stable orbit around it is uh, either captured into itself as a moon or it's captured into an orbit that's on resonance, like one-to-one, -one. that's what those Lagrange points are, or in some kind of two, three to two uh, resonant orbits. So the orbits of these objects are controlled by Jupiter. Um, and, in, and in that sense, Jupiter has cleared its orbit either. Um, so there's no other object that's like Jupiter in its own orbit.
And, and that's the criteria that Pluto fails and is now dwarf planet. 